Hey everyone, Steve here from SJ Woodworks. Uh, we're back at the shop today to, to make another project. And I think we're going to do another bowl today. It's been a while since we've done one. Um, this is a big one. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I got this piece of wood from the wood guy. I don't know if you guys saw the mini documentary we did about Tim the wood guy. I got this from him. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, it's written on here in pencil, dogwood with a question mark. So I guess this is dogwood. Um, but I'm not totally convinced that's what it is. Um, but I guess we'll see. It's it's pretty big. I think this could give us maybe a, a nine and a half or ten inch bowl if I'm careful. Could be an eight inch bowl if I'm not careful. If we have some problems. Um, but I'm going to need to knock the corners off on the bandsaw, and then we're going to put a, um, a faceplate on here to to get it on the lathe. So I'm going to go ahead to the bandsaw, and then we'll talk about faceplates. Okay, I have two different uh, faceplates. Uh, first of all, I've kind of just knocked the corners off on the bandsaw on this thing. There's going to be a lot of roughing out to do, and it's going to be laborious because I don't have a good circle cutting jig or the greatest bandsaw blade right now so I just knocked it off and we'll go from there. Um, my two face plates I have this one three inch face plate that's got just four screw holes in it then I have this one that came with the jet six inch face plate a whole bunch of screw holes in it, I don't know, like 18 or something like that and um, and really with the blank that's about 10 by 10 the three inch face plate probably would have been enough four screws maybe isn't that great uh, considering this is sort of a rough surface, um, the biggest issue I had is it's got this kind of a step in it. It looks like when it was when this log was chainsawed, chainsaw kind of got to here and stopped and then restarted. You know, about a quarter of an inch higher or, or three sixteenths of an inch higher. So um, when I put the three inch one on here, the screws were going to fall right where that step is. I just wasn't comfortable with that. So since you know I've got the six inch one, I decided to throw that on there, put a bunch of screws in it, and for this part where the step is, I just put a wedge of wood in here to fill that gap uh, to make the face plate nice and even and get good solid contact all the way around. So I've just put in several screws. I didn't put in the whole 18. Um, you know, obviously the more screws the better. The better bite you've got here, the better. So for safety reason, you should use all the screw holes. You should use the appropriate screws, etc. Um, this is what's going to work for me today. I think the screws I'm using are number 12 sheet metal screws, inch and a half long. I use the flathead screws for this faceplate because these are uh, countersunk or chamfered uh, screw holes here, so these are made for the flathead screws. If you have a faceplate like this one, for example, where it's just flat right here, you're going to want to use the panhead or the dome sheet metal screws um, for that. These these ones will not work. First of all, these ones are too big for this faceplate. Anyway, the diameter is too big, but you don't want to use the triangle shaped, the flathead screws like this unless you have countersunk holes for your screws. So pick the appropriate screws for your faceplate. Um, and I pre-drilled um, with just my regular hand drill so that I wouldn't split the wood and so that I wouldn't get these screws stuck in here. I want to be able to get them out later. Uh, so I pre-drilled them and I think uh, this is going to hold pretty well. So I'm going to put this up on the lathe and then we're going to spend some time uh, roughing this out. I know it's going to be a fair amount of work, but uh, you know, that's the, the not fun part of turning, right? Roughing out the blank, and then we'll get to the fun stuff. So let's go over to the lathe. All right, um, here we are on the lathe. I'm going to be wearing my full face shield, of course, for this, and standing out of the line of fire. This wood looks really solid. Um, I actually don't see any checks or cracks anywhere, but you never know what's going to be in there. So when you're working with something of decent size, stand out of the way, wear your, you know, full protection, uh, don't take any chances. And at a slow speed, of course, because this is pretty out of balance with this uh, pretty big branch that was coming out of this tree at some point. Okay, let's talk a little bit about roughing out. Um, roughing out with a carbide gouge can be quite a bit different than using a bowl gouge. Um, and I, I didn't subject you to watching me rough out as far as it's gone, but I, I remember, you know, actually you can go really quick with a carbide gouge. Uh, the thing is that instead of, um, you know, going in and kind of going like this as you do the roughing out, 
I tend to do a lot more just plunging in. I've got my tool rest here on the side because I also did some roughing out from the side here. Remember we had this big branch that was coming off. It actually looks like it might give us some good figure there. But um, to get that off I kind of came in from the side but just kind of plunge in a little bit here. Move over, plunge in a little bit, move over a little bit, plunge in again. And that's kind of how I do my roughing. Uh, you know, the, the rule book isn't written really for carbide uh, cutters, so you do what works for you. But that's kind of what I do when I'm really in the rough stages. Uh, once I get this fully rounded out and I'm kind of doing some more shaping, I can do a lot more, you know, plunge in a little bit and guide it around the corners and things like that. But uh, for just raw roughing, I just kind of stick it in there, pull it out, stick it in again, and, uh, you know, plunge in there a few times, just kind of moving along until you've got everything uh, evened out. So I'm going to show you some roughing. We've got a little more to go here on this edge to get it all rounded before we start shaping the bowl. Um, I don't want to leave any bark on this one, um, which means it looks like it could be kind of a shallow bowl because of this side is quite a bit more shallow than it is on this side where we'd actually have a lot more room uh, for a deeper bowl. But that's all right. I mean, the wood is what it is, and I, I'm not really keen on leaving this bark here. So We'll just keep going until that's gone in our bowl, and we'll just have kind of a shallower bowl, and that's okay. But I'm going to show you a little roughing out here. Okay, things are things are looking pretty good here. Um, so, you know, the outside's completely rough still, obviously, because I've just been really removing a lot of wood. But I've got the shape about that I want here. We're just about through this bark. The rest of that will come off when we clean this up. So I'm going to start smoothing out and curving out this edge here, and then we're going to uh, put a tenon right here. Uh, well, we'll have to decide if we're going to do a tenon or a recess. I can't decide. Um, to put in the jaws of our chuck when we turn it around to hollow it out, but we're going to smooth around the edges here. Remember that turning a bowl with carbide tools is actually pretty different than using a bowl gouge. Uh, this step, you know, effect that you get when you do the roughing out, you smooth that out, but you can still use the square carbide cutter for that. In fact, that's the best tool for setting the shape of the outside of the bowl, especially if your square cutter is slightly radius like mine is. Be careful, the end of the tool gets really hot. Okay, a real quick talk about uh, chucks here. So this is my uh, Supernova 2 chuck. I actually have two of these exact same one. And uh, the various jaws that I have for it for different sizes. Now, basically what I have here are 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, and 4 inch jaws. Um, they call these big ones the power grip jaw set. 
and you can hold some pretty big stuff with this this thing. But so um, I'm trying to decide, you know, what size jaws should you use for what you're doing. Obviously, this bowl is way too big for one inch jaws. Plus, we're going to do a tenon, and these uh, really are for expansion mode only. So we're not going to use these, but I do have this set, and I have used it before. Um, two inch jaws. This is what's actually mounted on the chuck right now is another set of these two inch jaws. This is kind of the standard that comes with it. Um, you can grip a tenon as small as, you know, I mean, this is how I try and remember what it is. You know, you can grip a tenon as small as about a one and seven eighth inches and get into a recess that's a little bit bigger than that. Uh, three inch jaws a little bigger and these four inch jaws obviously a little bit bigger. Now the four inch jaws really, the tenon that you can grip with these is all the way down to like three and a quarter. In fact, I, I actually have the manual. I want to look up what it really is. And it says that uh, in contracting action, so gripping a tenon with a, for grip to grip bowls of the foot mounting, the size of the foot being between 80 millimeters and 100 millimeters. So that's three and five thirty seconds um, and uh, four inches for the tenon. So given the size of the bowl that we're making about 10 inches, I actually want a tenon that is about three and a half inches uh, in size. So I think we're gonna go ahead and use these ones because they're the closest to the size that I wanna do uh, for the foot of my bowl. So uh, we'll use these big jaws on here. I'm gonna mount these big jaws onto my chuck uh, as soon as I've got everything ready over there uh, to reverse the bowl. So um, these are the jaws we're gonna use. You'll see these on the chuck in a minute, but first we're gonna go and um, kind of shear scrape the outside and, and set the tenon size and do some sanding and finishing on the outside. So remember that 80 millimeters is the minimum size of the tenon for those things and I've got this at about 88 millimeters right now which is a little under three and a half inches so that's what I'm going to go for for the tenon size. Um, I'm leaving myself a little room because I'm going to do uh, dovetail. I just wanted to show you how I do the dovetail. Right now it's pretty much straight across from the uh, square carbide cutter. But if I rotate it just a little bit, I can actually cut a dovetail on there. So that's usually how I cut the dovetail on my tenon. I'm going to square the bottom off here just a little more. If you've been watching my channel, you, you will recognize this tool. We've used it before. It's just a round carbide cutter, but this one is cupped. It's not flat. So this one actually doesn't do uh, scraping motion. This is actually a shear cutting action if you hold it at an angle here. And again, I, I've, I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to do uh, some SJ Wood Shorts videos about all the different shaped carbide cutters that I have. And this is one that I always use for a finish cut because it, it leaves a pretty smooth cut and it gets rid of a lot of this torn end grain. Hopefully it gets rid of a lot of this torn end grain because I don't want to sand through all that stuff. So it's, it's going to shape, do the final shaping and cutting here. Okay, I'll get you caught up. So we sanded the other side, and we'll have another chance to finish, you know, do a finish sanding on this back side here, on the outside of the bowl uh, later. There's a lot of room here to work on that a little more if we need to. Uh, but it came out pretty well. Now we're, I've turned it around. I've removed the face plate. You can see where the face plate was because there's no dust on it. Um, and uh, you can reuse these screws from your face plate. And hold on to them as long as they're in good shape. But if you've stripped them out at all, throw them away. You don't want to risk um, being able to get it in and then not being able to get a screw out or twisting the head off of it or something and have it in there. You'll ruin a, a bowl blank, maybe a face plate, whatever that way. Um, so if they're in good shape, use them again. It's one reason to use square headed um, screws. So screws with a square drive in them instead of a Phillips drive. That's less likely to strip out. I didn't have those, um, so I just used Phillips, but mine are, I mean, this was the first time I used those screws, so they're good for a while still. I didn't strip any of them out this time. Uh, anyway, we're going to need to hollow this out, obviously, but there's this big step like I showed you before. I'm going to use the square carbide cutter actually to kind of work on that step a bit before I get to hollowing. Let's bring the tool rest around.
Okay, let's get you all caught up here. So, um, finished hollowing out the inside like you saw, and then we sanded everything down. Um, went in for dinner, came back out. Things had moved a little bit, as it often does, so I kind of trued up the outside again, which meant I had to sand the outside again, uh, which means really I've got a couple little sanding marks that I ought to work on here on the outside still. But then I, I took it off the chuck, turned it around. Basically, I've just got a piece of uh, padding between the bowl and just the closed jaw of the chuck now and my tailstock holding it there. So I'm gonna take some light cuts to remove this foot and uh, hopefully we left enough room uh, to get rid of this foot altogether and leave it a little indentation there for this thing to sit flat. And then the last little nub here I'll finish off by hand. So let's get rid of the foot now. I'm gonna use a diamond uh, carbide tool for this, I think. Let's see how that goes. Okay, uh, this video is getting a little long, so I'm just going to wrap it up here. So just as I said, um, put a little detail here in the bottom, maybe you can see, and uh, did some sanding, uh, brought down the nut to get it off and kind of hand sanded the little bottom here, and then uh, cleaned everything up, put on a coat of walnut oil, which is going to dry now, and then maybe in a future video I'll show um, the buffing stage, maybe I'll do some buffing with the Beal buffing system. Uh, to really give this a good shine, but actually I kind of like it with a matte finish, just walnut oil too, so we'll see how that goes. But it came out about 9.5 by 3 inches, um, so a pretty good bowl, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think that it could be dogwood as I'm looking at it, and I look at other pictures of dogwood bowls online. I think maybe it is dogwood, but I'm not sure enough that I'm actually going to write dogwood here on the bottom. I'll probably leave that off because I'm not exactly positive. But uh, I'm pleased with it, so we turned this bowl using entirely carbide tools. We used a lot of different carbide tools, and uh, like I said real soon, I'm going to put up some videos about the tools that I have and the, the shapes of the cutters and what they do. But for now, thanks for joining. Um, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I uh, appreciate uh, you coming to watch today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section, and I'll be sure to respond. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.